want to welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for our Lowell Public Schools preschool yeah. registration information session. Uh, I'm Jeffrey Pickett. I'm the community outreach strategist for the district. And before I turn things over to our early childhood team, I just want to go over a few items. Uh, one, we are recording this session so that we can post it on our website for any families that missed it and would like to see the information afterwards. And also in the chat box, uh, I posted a link to a Google form that you can fill out so that you can sign up to receive our emails and texts about preschool registration. Uh, this is especially important if you are not currently receiving our communications from the Lowell Public Schools. Uh, if you don't have a child already in the district and you're new to the district, this is a great way that you'll be able to get our communications, uh, even though you're not officially enrolled yet. Uh, you could also use this chat to ask us questions during the presentation. And there's also a Q&A feature in which you could also ask us questions um, during the presentation. There'll be some points during the presentation where we stop and, and are able to address questions that you have. So with that being said, I'd like to turn things over to Lisa Van Thiel, who is the director of the Early Childhood Program here in Lowell and is also the principal of one of our preschools, the Cardinal. So Lisa, take it away. All right, well, welcome everybody. Um, thank you uh, for taking the time out of your day uh, to join us today. Um, as Jeffrey said, we encourage you um, to put any kinds of questions that you have um, into the chat or the Q&A, and we will be sure to answer them um, at the end of this presentation. So please put them in as we're going along. And I want to take this opportunity um, to have my colleague, Susan LaCroix, Assistant Early Childhood Coordinator, to introduce herself. Hello, good, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. And um, I look forward to welcoming your students into preschool. Thank you. And Fred uh, is a retired principal um, from the Maury School and he is back helping us with uh, registration. Fred, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, good, good, good afternoon. My name is Fred McOsker. Um, filling in at um, Family Resource Center, helping with McKinney Vento. And I'll explain that a little bit further on in the presentation. Okay. And who else has joined us, Jeffrey? I believe uh, Rebecca Duda from the Family Resource Center is joining us by telephone. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yes, well, thank you. My name is Rebecca Duda and I'm the coordinator of the Family Resource Center. Great. Well, welcome everybody. Um, and we're glad to have you. Jeffrey, if you could pull back up the slides, I'll go over the agenda with people and uh, we'll begin. And again, remember uh, to ask any questions that you have in the chat. Okay. Absolutely. We'll just uh, bring up the presentation. Here we go. Great. If you just want to go right to the agenda. Thank you. Okay, well, our goal is to welcome you again to Lowell Public Schools. We hope that um, you and your children will join us next year. Um, and we're gonna talk about who's eligible for preschool. We're gonna give you some information around Lowell Public Schools preschool curriculum. We'll give you an overview. We'll talk a little bit about why attendance matters and um, importance of family engagement. And then I'm gonna be passing it over to my colleague, Susan LaCroix, who will be talking about the registration process, next steps, and we'll end with some frequently asked questions that we know and be looking at the questions um, that you have posted in the chat. So again, welcome uh, to our presentation. Next slide, please, Jeffrey. So children turning four years old on or before September 1st of 2021 are eligible to register for preschool. Children receiving special education services are eligible to attend preschool at the age of three. Next slide, please. So our preschool program offers young children the opportunity to explore some rich content um, through curriculum units that begin with the child and expand their world outwards. 
um, and they're of high interest to children. We do have a curriculum map that um, is found on the Lowell Public Schools website in our curriculum instruction uh, department's uh, website, as well as on the early childhood website. Um, the units really explore and expand um, the children's knowledge of the world around them, um, building from their families out into the world through, as I said, rich content that allows them to explore new concepts and develop new skills that foster social emotional development, um, increase vocabulary, language, um, mathematics, and early literacy skills. And they're really doing this while they're engaging in, in what the children would assume is play through our center time activities. Um, Lowell Public Schools offers a two and a half hour integrated preschool program. And we also have three full day classrooms um, that um, offer a full day. Each um, session, whether morning, afternoon, or full day is staffed by an early childhood teacher and a prepare paraprofessionals. Our class sizes um, vary. Uh, it's really from 12 to 15 um, students in a classroom. If you can go to the next slide, uh, please. Thank you. So um, this is sort of a typical day uh, in a and our preschool classrooms begin uh, with the kids coming in to their classrooms. Um, they'll engage in a community circle where they'll talk about what's new in their lives or share information with each other. Um, and they'll uh, engage in a read aloud. The read aloud is usually around the, it's to help them build vocabulary and content knowledge around the topic that they're exploring. After the read aloud, um, and, and they're engaging in all kinds of uh, read alouds, nonfiction, fiction, uh, narratives. Um, so it's a great opportunity to explore a variety of, of types of literature. Um, our introduction to centers is the opportunity for the teacher to explain to children what is happening in each of the centers. There are 11 centers in our classrooms. Uh, and uh, each day there are new activities that are um, explained and explored uh, in the classroom. During our center time, teachers pull children uh, twice a week for a literacy activity and twice a week for a math activity. And then on Fridays, um, children will, pull, uh, will be pulled into small groups if they needed a little extra help on uh, the content that was being covered in the small groups. All children are given the opportunity to engage in gross motor activities, whether it's in the classroom or outdoors um, or in a gym for at least 20, 25 minutes a day. Uh, for our preschoolers, um, routines are a part of our curriculum. Um, we're really looking at whether it's breakfast or lunch, we're teaching children how to open their yogurts or um, open their milk and put their straw in to build independence, hand washing, um, all of those um, important skills are being developed during those routine times. The second circle is really an opportunity for us to explore some more content with students around yeah. science. Uh, we engage in songs, words, and letter play, which are really around yeah. building phonemic awareness, our concepts of print, and we read books or have community discussions around social emotional learning um, activities that take place. Um, we do have a social emotional curriculum called Second Steps that is implemented in our preschool classroom. Um, now we're gonna give you an opportunity to um, see our classrooms um, and hear from our teachers. Uh, next, uh, Jeffrey. Preschool is so important for so many reasons. Kids learn how to be at school. Kids learn to form relationships with other kids. Kids learn to trust adults and view adults as trusted resources. And kids have fun. They make connections and they begin a lifelong love of learning. Having this piece to really start your schooling career is crucial. I, I really feel like the kids that had no preschool experience prior to entering kindergarten were already on their first day kind of behind uh, the other kids that had already experienced all this and understood how school works. The curriculum is based around modules throughout the year. There are six modules um, and 
it goes from the beginning of the year all about me, learning about home, to learning about the community, and then to start thinking and learning about the bigger world around us. So it's just giving kids a place to sort of begin their learning and to begin to understand their place in their family and their community and in the world in general. So the activities are based around, you know, for example, what you might want to be when you grow up or what kind of animals hibernate and what kind of animals migrate, different parts of the world with different celebrations. And then a lot of learning around building and constructing and engineering, all those 21st century skills that we want kids to have. Another factor to consider when selecting a preschool is whether to enroll in a full day program or in a half day program. Half day programs are held in both the mornings and afternoons and cover the same curriculum as the full day programs. The students are only here for two and a half hours, uh, but during that time it is go, go, go. They come in, they have either breakfast or lunch, uh, depending if they're in the morning or afternoon session. Uh, from there, we have a circle time. Uh, during that circle time, we really uh, foster our oral language based on a theme. Uh, we read a story each day and talk about um, whatever is important to discuss regarding any of the behaviors that we actually see in class. Um, before we break off and go into our centers time. And there are 11 different centers for the students to rotate through. And this is the big part of preschool, I feel, that is helpful for kindergarten uh, because the students learn to take turns, they learn to play, they learn to negotiate, problem solve with their friends, um, all while having fun. It's almost like play with a purpose. <laughs> there's always something fun, there's always something unexpected, there's always something exciting because they're young kids and young kids love to learn and they love to be with other kids. And so even while we do the same things every day, you know, we have circle time and we have story time and we do small groups and we play math games and we do literacy activities. Every day is different because every child learns something different and every child experiences something different throughout the day. Thank you, Jeffrey. So um, got a good look at what it looks like. Um, that's actually some pictures from the Cardinal O'Connell School. Um, so preschool really uh, provides the opportunity for children to build those social skills, build friendships, um, and gain uh, new vocabulary through books and active engagement in opportunities where they can use the language that they're learning. Um, our curriculum is based on early learning standards, and our goal is to support each child really in reaching their full potential prior to kindergarten entry. For many children, that really includes building their self-confidence and willingness to try new things and practice new skills, such as counting, recognizing numbers in their name, or being a member of a group. But attendance is a critical factor. We ask that families make a commitment to regularly attending school in order for their children to form friendships, be connected to the learning that's taking place, and participate in the many and varied opportunities for developing skills predict predictive of school success. Our policy um, is posted, our attendance policy is posted online at the Family Resource Center, um, but we really want children to attend. So children that are missing more than 10% of the total um, days are of attendance um, are in jeopardy of losing their space in preschool, given that we don't have enough capacity to provide preschool to all the uh, children in the community that we wish to. Next slide, please. Um, family engagement is equally important. Families are really seen as a partner in learning. Um, we believe that children deserve a champion, an adult who will never give up on them, who understands the power of connection and insists that they become the best they can be. To, to ensure that we must partner with families and encourage all families to contribute to participate in our school community through our parent-teacher um, organizations, which plan activities for schools or our school site council where parents are involved in leadership or through daily two-way communication through emails, phone calls, or texts, as well as um, district level communication 
um, such as the announcement you may have received uh, for this um, event. Next slide, uh, please. Susan, I'm gonna pass this over to you to talk a little bit about the registration process. Wonderful, thank you so much, Lisa. Yes, the preschool registration period begins March 8th and ends March 28th. Families can enroll after that period of time, but you will not be included in the preschool lottery. Registration is currently being done online through our online plat platform. On the public school website, the Family Resource Center, you will see the link for that. Um, Jeffrey, you wanna take a look at that or? Yes. So this is the website where you will see regis the registration information and the registration link. And the way you get to that website, you go to our homepage two ways. You'll see on this top banner, the, I believe it's the second picture, yes, is preschool registration. And you click read more, or you can go down to our district news section and you'll see a preschool registration item. This item also appears on every website in the district. It's cross posted under, under the district news section. So when you're on this section, it will give you multiple resources including the form that I've referenced that you can sign up to get our contact. Uh, you could sign up to get onto our contact list. Um, information about our virtual info sessions, which you're attending right now. You can go to the early childhood website from here to learn more about preschool curriculum and programs. You also, which we'll get to further. Actually, why, don't you, why don't you go ahead there? That question's already come up, the chart. The chart. So yeah, you'll also be able to see on this web page, you'll be able to see a list of all of our schools that are offered, uh, that offer preschool, um, and what the times are, their morning afternoon session, or in the case of the Cardinal and the Green Alge, the times of the full day sessions. And you'll be able to see all of the schools in Lowell that offer preschool. You will also, on this page, as of March 8th, there will be a link to the registration form and you'll be able to go right onto this page and click the registration form and you'll be able to send it, uh, submit it to us. There's also information about the preschool lottery, which we'll get to later, as well as a very helpful resource, uh, frequently asked questions, which really get into some of the uh, nitty gritty with the registration process. So we'll be going over some more of these resources throughout this presentation, but I just wanted to let everybody know um, that this exists on our website. Once again, you could get there by going to the homepage and it's in two different locations on the homepage in the banner section and also in the district news section. And it has a really easy to remember URL. It's lowell.k12.ma.us slash preschool registration. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. So as you can see, the preschool registration will be done online and we encourage before you begin the registration process we encourage you to do a little bit of homework and find a school that best meets your family's needs there are 14 elementary schools in Lowell that house preschool programming please consider the location of the school and the hours as Jeffrey showed up earlier and clicked on the list of the schools, it will tell you which schools, the AM session and the PM session that's available for each school. When a family enters the lottery, they are asked to identify three choices. Those are your three choices for the schools. Just a FYI, only the Green Elge Elementary School and the Cardinal O'Connell Early Learning Center have full day options. Those seats are limited, um, but if you're looking for full day, you would choose one of those schools. The remaining elementary schools only have half day programming. The next step in the registration is gather the documents that you'll need for registration. 
You must provide documentation to complete the registration process and be entered into the, the lottery. If you are unable to provide the documentation at the time you submit your registration, that is okay. You will, however, need to provide the documentation prior to March 28th to be included in the lottery. Documents that you will need is our child's birth certificate, child's immunization records, a photo ID of the parent or guardian registering the child, proof of residency. That is, can be a copy of a current utility bill, lease, or mortgage. It should be dated within the last 30 days. Before we go on to transportation, I just want to remind all families that the registration period is March 8th through March 28th to be entered in the lottery. You can register after the 28th, but be, to be considered for the lottery, your registration needs to be complete, which means your documents need to be submitted prior to the 28th of March. Documents are submitted online, which means that you would upload the documents after you receive a confirmation email. If you have some trouble with uploading the documents, there are staff that you can call or you can send an email that can support you through this, or you can call and make an appointment to find the process of dropping off your papers in person. Let me go back to the transportation slide. Please, and Fred's going to take that over and discuss that. Okay, the transportation part. Transportation for preschool students is not provided by the district. Families are responsible for transporting children to and from school. Um, and that's just our current situation with buses for that grade level. Maybe sometime in the future when there's plenty of money around, we'll get busing. But as you're making your plans, please keep that in mind. Thank you. We did go over the online registration process. Um, we can move on to the next slide, Jeffrey. This right here is what the online registration form looks like. Online registration is processed Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. However, you can complete this online form at any time. You can do it at six o'clock in the morning. You can complete it at nine o'clock at night. Just be aware that the applications will not be processed until eight, if and four the next day if you do it at nighttime. As you can see, as Jeffrey's scrolling through the form, it asks for sp specific information. Some of it is relative to the school year you're registering form. The date that you are registering. And then it continues on with information on the parent and guardian including contact information, email addresses, home addresses, cell phone, primary phone, however you need to, the best way to contact you. And then it moves on to the child information. And this is information about your child, including the name, first name, middle name, and last name, the date of birth, It'll ask you questions such as primary language, if your child has um, an IEP or a 504, and it'll ask you some additional information. The online registration form is not really time consuming, but it's best to be prepared for it. As we discussed earlier about having your choices for the three, your three schools, ahead of time makes it a little bit easier. Visiting the website prior to completing the registration form is important that you'll be able to see what the school hours are, where the location of that school is in proximity to your home. 
once all the registration, once you submit the registration form, you will receive an email from a family resource center staff member. And what they will do is they'll ask you for the documentation. Again, the documentation is, is list that you will need is listed on the website. So you can gather that prior to completing the application, but it does include the birth certificate, immunization records, photo ID of a parent and guardian registering the child, and of course, proof of address, which means a copy of a current utility bill, lease, or mortgage. Once you submit all of your documentation, you will receive a follow-up email from your assigned Family Resource Center clerk informing you of the status of your registration. Just a reminder though, the lottery period runs from March 8th to March 28th. At 11.59, that's when the lottery cutoff occurs. All documentation needs to be submitted prior to them. Fred? Hello. Uh, McKinney Vinto. McKinney Vinto is a homeless education act. It's a federal law that it ensures that homeless students and youth have equal access to the same appropriate public education as other children. Um, in its simplest form, um, the district has a number of people who are homeless. And if you, families are placed in a shelter or are doubled up, um, have an incident where they're temporarily dislocated by a fire, the McKinney-Vento Act is the service that provides transportation for the student back to their home school. Um, Currently, we run into a lot of families that are doubled up living with other families. Um, you can still register your child for school with a third party affidavit, bring that person in with you. And you are considered eligible for school even though you don't have a fixed address in Lowell. Um, if you're living with, so is a third party affidavit on our website. In addition, there's a McKinney Vinto email, uh, which we check daily. So if you have any questions, concerns, um, for some reason can't get a third party after David, please email us or give us a call and we will work with you to make sure your child can access school. Thank you. Next slide. All right, thank you, Fred. All right. Next slide, please. Jeffrey? We're on the next slide. Okay, next steps. <laughs> Susan. Absolutely, next steps, here we go. What's great about the next steps is that the preschool lottery will occur by May 31st. That means by May, on or before May 31st, we will share information with you about your child's lottery number and placement. What happens is all students that are pre-registered during the lottery period are randomly assigned a lottery number. Based upon that lottery number, your choices and the schools are assigned. And, and can you just explain why we, we had a question in the chat and so I figured it would be good to work this in now since we're talking lottery. Why do we need a lottery? Oh, yes. Sure. Want to go? Go ahead, Sue. We would love not to need a lottery. <laughs> However, we do not have enough spaces for all of the students that do want to enter Lowell Preschool. Preschool um, classrooms are located throughout the district and the 14 elementary schools, but each school has a different amount of preschool classrooms. Some schools only have one preschool classroom. Others, like here at the Cardinal, we have eight. So there's a different amount and there's really not enough spaces to accommodate all the families and all the students that would like a preschool placement. Lisa, would you like to expand on that? Sure. Um, 
we, we, we again we we just don't have enough physical space in our buildings um, to offer everybody uh, preschool at this time and um, with the full and half day um, it's important for families to know that um, low public schools has a grant that funds the three full day classrooms that we have available in the district and they are part of the lottery we could offer uh, more um, full day options but currently um, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education reimburses school districts through chapter 70 only for a half day of preschool in many districts they do charge tuition for the second half of the day um, but we um, don't a have the space and b um, would prefer not to charge any tuition for uh, public education um, so Part of the reason that we have the lottery is we need a fair and equitable way um, to enroll people. So by assigning people a lottery number and placing them um, based on the lottery number that they're given, um, you know, we are providing a fair and equitable opportunity um, based really on, on chance, um, which is what most school districts in Massachusetts um, do for a preschool. Um, However, if a student has a disability, um, we do provide access to all of those students. Um, there was a question that was in the chat uh, about a three-year-old um, returning. If you currently have a three-year-old in um, our preschool programs, um, that child will remain uh, in the same uh, classroom for the following um, year. Um, so you do not need to re-register. So if you have a three-year-old who's returning uh, as a four-year-old, you do not need to register. Um, if you have a, a new three-year-old coming into the district with an IEP, you do need to register. I just wanted to uh, clarify that, but you are not put in the lottery if you are a student with a disability. Those students are placed based on their disability. Susan, um, do you wanna take over with um, the notification and telling them the process of the lottery? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, what will happen is once all the numbers are randomly assigned and the students are placed according to their lottery number and their choices, parents will receive written notification through email. So it's very important that the email that you register your child with is one of the emails that you use or check frequently. Please be aware that please sometimes the notifications will go into a spam or junk folder. So please check all your folders that are available in that email server. But again, please use one that you check most frequently because communication will primarily occur by your email. You will receive written notification of your preschool assignment. You must respond to that notice and you can choose the following options. You can either accept the placement and your child will be assigned, formally assigned, and begin attending that school in the fall. You can accept the placement and go on a wait list for your preferred school. We do keep a wait list and we do refer to the wait list um, frequently. Can we get an accurate amount of time of how long or how fast the wait list will move? No. That would be unfair for us to say, as sometimes it does move quicker, sometimes it's a little bit slower. You can also reject the placement and remain on the wait list for your preferred school, or you can reject the placement all outright and seek alternative preschool programming for your child. If you accept the wait list, if you accept the placement, my apologies, and, re and remain on the wait list for your preferred school, your child will begin preschool in September. If you reject the placement and remain on a wait list for your preferred school, we cannot guarantee that your child will start at the same time as LPS preschool students start, but you will be, the, the wait list is reviewed, it is referenced, and it is updated and pretty much almost daily in the summer. So just wanna make sure you have that. Once you get your notification of your assignment letter, you need to respond within 15 days to the early childhood department. 
indicating one of your selections below. Hey, there's a couple of questions in the um, chat that I'm gonna um, answer. One is about sibling preference. There is no sibling preference for preschool. Um, again, it is totally a lottery based um, uh, placement system. Um, so, and, and that response um, to the placement that you are given is a really critical letter to return uh, to us. Um, that email, actually it's not a letter now, it's an email, um, return that right away to us with um, your choices or preference. Um, again, all lottery based, no preference to siblings at all. Um, the, this was a really good question, Susan. Um, they wanted to know about, um, you know, the uh, what percentage of students um, usually receive placement. Last year, we were actually able to place uh, I think almost everybody that um, was in the lottery, whether they got the placement that they wanted or not, um, that's a different story. Again, that's why it's really important um, to make a decision on choice A, B, and C uh, schools um, because we go down your list. So if um, you're in the middle of the lottery, you may not get your A choice, but you may get your B choice. Um, if you're sort of towards the end of the lottery, you might get your um, C choice. So we really encourage you to um, look at the list and um, the location of the schools. Jeffrey, would you mind bringing that back up uh, for families to look at? Yes. Uh, and just um, see the school links because I think that's really important. I think Susan mentioned the fact that how important it is for families to do their homework. And I uh, fully agree with that. So if you go to this chart, you have the hours um, and you need to think about the hours and the location of the school. You can also click on the school um, where it's blue and it will bring you um, to that school's website and it might provide you with some more information. You can also phone the school if you have some additional questions and I'm sure that they would find someone uh, to speak to you if you have some specific questions. We did this on Tuesday night and I did receive a couple of emails uh, from families with follow-up questions. So, um, and at the end of this, we'll give you our contact information. So you can contact us or you can contact individuals with any particular questions that you have. Um, thank you for doing that. Um, thank you. Um, I do want to add to you is that historically there has not been enough spaces for the amount of families that have registered. Because of the requirement that students be four on or before September 1st mm -hmm. of that school year does play a factor. As we all know that birth orders, there can be, you know, children, um, many children born, born after the 1st of September. So that does impact as well. And each year, um, it's a little bit hard to, hard to say, but for the most part, we do try to place everyone, even if it's not right at the start of the school year, mm -hmm. but as things change, we may be able to accommodate as many as possible. I think one other factor um, that's important for families that came up the other night is you are really picking the school, not the session, meaning we have AM and PM sessions at different schools. Um, if let's say your preference is, um, the Green Hall AM. Um, however, if we get to your name on the list and the Green Hall is uh, your first choice, we may still give you the Green Hall, but it might be a PM session. And sometimes it works out perfect um, because Susie gave an example the other uh, night about you know you you accept the Green Hall and you have the PM, but you want to remain on the wait list for AM because that works better for your family. You can take that and, and do that. And sometimes it works out because somebody else may have gotten something and something had changed. Um, we really try to make all of those accommodations to really what your first choice is. So, um, you know, you can accept a placement and then still remain on the wait list and we'll do our best. Obviously, we like that to happen before school starts because once children are in a class, they are making friends 
and um, building relationships with their peers and teachers. So we really try to make sure that we have as much of uh, this kind of movement off um, before um, the school year actually starts. Um, Susan, uh, pe can people register after the lottery period? Of course you can register. Registration for preschool does occur all year. You can do it after the lottery period. You can do it on September 1 of the school year. However, if you register after the 28th, what will happen is that you will not be included in the lottery. One, if you register after the lottery period, you will automatically go on the wait list. And the wait list is created in a manner that one, all lottery participants that did not either one did not get their an assignment or a placement or went back on the wait list for their preferred school. Those are at the top. The remaining families that register after the lottery period are entered on the lottery by their registration date. We have a couple of questions here that I think our Family Resource Center could um, answer. Dr. Duda, who is in charge of the Family Resource Center. Um, I'm registering children for both kindergarten and preschool. I understand no preference is given in terms of being in the same school, but will I also be able to know where my child has been placed for kindergarten around the same time as when you find out when the child has been placed for preschool in order to figure out what our best option is in terms of accepting placement, wait lists, et cetera? Hi, Jeff, thanks for the question. Um, in a typical school year, we try to have our kindergarten placements out by the beginning of June. This is not a typical school year, so kindergarten registration is after preschool this year. And you know, we don't have dates set yet in April for kindergarten, so I, I can't say exactly when I'll be sending out kindergarten assignments. My goal would be by the end of the school year in June. So I anticipate that will be after parents have been notified for preschool. So it's, um, but that's only a guess because nothing's been set in stone yet for kindergarten, but it's, we're a little behind this year. Another question which crosses over into both preschool and kindergarten is, uh, can my child continue kindergarten um, in an elementary school that's not in their zone if they're attending preschool there? Um, so, you know, again, they choose preschool. the preschool that's across town and, and can they continue going to kindergarten there if they're, that's not their zone? Preschool sure. is a so one year placement and and then it goes to the, whatever the kindergarten policy is. Go ahead, Rebecca. Right, so um, the, under the current policy, you are not allowed to be in a, a school out of zone unless it's due to a babysitter issue. Um, and other than that, you are required to stay in, in your zone. So by babysitter issue, I mean, if the child is going is starts the day and ends the day at a it's a grandmother's house and grandmother lives in zone two and you live in zone one. So in we have a handful of families where that's the case, but but um, barring that, no, you may not remain out of zone in kindergarten. And that just to clarify there, that's just for kindergarten. You're there zones don't exist for preschool. You're able to select any preschool that fits your needs. Correct? Yes. That is correct. Yes. Okay, is there any other questions? I'm just looking at the any other questions, Jeffrey, that we didn't see. Uh, let's see. Um, just looking we, at both places. We talked about siblings. We talked about three-year-olds. Uh, can you go over the process if you do have a three-year-old, how you go about registering for preschool? So we do not enroll three-year-old typical peer three-year-olds. Um, we uh, three-year-olds with a diagnosed disability um, that have an individual education plan um, are enrolled in our uh, preschool classrooms. 
Um, and those children would have gone through um, that process of identifying um, their individual education plan and the creation of an IEP. Um, typical three-year-olds, if you wanna to go to the next um, slide, um, would be served in other programs within the community. And we would be um, happy to help uh, you know, families find those. Um, Lowell Public Schools Early Childhood Department offers a variety of programs um, to children that are unenrolled in Lowell Public Schools. Um, we have a parent-child home visiting program where a home visitor comes in twice a week um, to a family and brings a book or a toy each week and works with the, the parent really on um, engaging their child in learning at home. We offer weekly play groups. Um, we have a um, community events that we hold in the evenings or on the weekends like pumpkin palooza, cookies and crafts. Um, we also offer um, positive solutions, which is a parenting course and an open mic for families. Um, this year, we've just been talking about COVID and different things in those. If you go to the next slide, um, Jeffrey, I can give the information on Laura Valdez, who is our um, coordinated family and community engagement um, team leader. And she is available um, to provide information on other programs in the community. We also held last Wednesday night an event called um, uh, Community Connections, where all of our community partners um, were engaged in um, conversations with us and sharing information about their programs. Um, so we had the uh, family child care and other center-based programs available that do offer three-year-old programs. And I believe, Jeffrey, you're going to be posting that online, correct? That is correct, correct. Um, um, for families. Um, but if you reach out to Laura Valdez, uh, if you have a three-year-old um, or a younger child that you're looking for placement, she can, she can help with that uh, in providing uh, some information. So this is um, our early childhood staff, uh, Lori Carney um, and uh, Susan, myself and Laura Valdez are, are here to help you. Uh, the Family Resource Center is also available um, as well as any of the bilingual family liaisons have um, you know, this information as well to share with families. Any other questions that came up? I see a few more, I think. True. I think there's a couple of good ones. I was just answering it um, one directly. It was about if a child is three years old and has an IEP, does she register now or does she wait till the fall to register when she's four? If your child has an IEP and they are three years old, once you sign and accept the IEP, you can register your child. The process is the same. Documents are the same, but you do need to indicate that you're child does have an IEP and we'll need to provide a copy of, of that as well. Um, but as soon as you sign and accept, please register. Yeah. There was another one that had come in about the zones and I believe Fred had answered that um, via the Q&A. The, the zones. Uh, they can, they can look at the zones and see where the schools are in the zones. Right. Uh, there was also a question about picking the days. It's a five day a week program, whether it's five full days or five mornings or five afternoons, it's a five day program. Um, so, so if, let me just interrupt for one second. Um, Rebecca, I wanna show the, I'm sorry, Lisa, let me show the, um, the, zone map if on the family resource center there's school selection and that's one of the tabs on the left hand side and again note that zones only apply for students in grades k to eight um and but you can click on this very helpful map which even if you're again for preschool where zones don't apply this is a great map just that lays out where all of our schools are in the city and you can visit this map and and check out all of our schools. You know, for example, um, you know, this is the Robinson Middle School, but here 
right here, McAuliffe. You know, it gives you the website, the principal, phone number, and it's an interactive map of all of our schools in addition to telling you which schools are in which zone. And that again does not apply to preschool because we do not provide transportation, but does apply um, to kindergarten. So for the family that has a preschool and a kindergartner, they may want to look at that in choosing their schools. And you were reiterating, Lisa, that preschool is Monday to Friday. Yes, yes. Um, there was a couple of questions also about breakfast and lunch. For the morning session, students receive breakfast. For the afternoon session, children receive lunch. For the full day, they receive both breakfast and lunch. Um, I wanna make sure that I um, get that. And somebody obviously uh, uh, asked about um, COVID. We're hoping that in the fall, we are back to normal. Um, that is our uh, goal, but they said, um, what's the withdrawal process? Let's say you want to apply and then you find that you have some other options that are available to you. You can enter yourself in the lottery and then either A, not accept your placement because you found something else out. Um, or if you decide not to attend, um, the uh, process of withdrawal needs to be made in writing to us. That's um, via email or a letter, uh, but we do need it in writing. It needs to go to the school. If you're assigned to the Cardinal, then you would submit that information to the Cardinal school. If you were uh, chose the Pawtucketville or the McAuliffe, wherever your child is assigned where you want to withdraw, you need to put that in writing to that school. From there, they will make sure it, it is the child is withdrawn and notify us here in the early childhood department so we can look at the wait list and any available spots that people are waiting for. We had a question about watching this meeting at a later time. Um, you will be able to do that. Uh, again, let me take you to our website. The, if you go to the preschool registration section on our website, which you can easily access from the homepage, and also has an easy to remember URL, um, lowell.k12.ma.us slash preschool registration. Um, in the place where the virtual information session Zoom links are, by next week, there will be the, a video of one of these sessions so that you can rewatch the session. And we'll also have the video uh, that Lisa was referencing with the, um, community partners that offer um, before, before and after school care. And you'll also be able to find all of the other resources that we've discussed during today's presentation right on this website. Um, all the dates for registration, the list for what schools you can pick, what you need to gather for documents, the registration process, the lottery, as well as frequently asked questions as well. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanna mention the frequently asked questions because that was compiled during this for so many years um, that there's there seems to be a lot of the same questions that are answered. So please look that over and, and see if any of them are relative to any questions that you have. And they're pretty informative as well. And those were some of the most popular topics that have come up um, either in this forum or previous forums that we have had throughout the years. Uh, Fred. Yes, there's one question on there. Is it, is it Monday through Friday or we pick the days? Preschool Monday through Friday. It, it's, it's five days a week, uh, five mornings or five afternoon or five full days, depending upon the session that you are assigned. So it is not a two day or a three day a week program. And again, back to attendance, it's really important to attend um, the program consistently. All right, any last minute questions? I wanna thank all of the families for taking time out of their uh, busy schedule to be with us. And if there's any families out there that would like flyers to share with friends or families or direct them, please reach out to us, we'll provide them. Um, we really did our best to distribute some flyers and get the word out to folks, but 
Um, you know, parents, connecting with parents is really the best way uh, for us to spread the word. So I just want to acknowledge all of you for being here and let us know um, if you need anything. We're here to serve you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Um, one quick Thank question, you. one quick thing I want to say. My um, email is wrong on this PowerPoint. It's missing the A. Um, but I also want us to remember that when we do make our three choices, and we all have our preferences for schools, and this comes up a lot in the questions as well, is that what is the difference between this preschool and that preschool at the schools? All of our preschools you use the this unified curriculum, the unified schedule, what occurs in one is going to occur in the other. And the goal of that is to ensure that all of the students move up to kindergarten with the same background information about hearing those same vocabulary words, those similar experiences as the curriculum and the instruction ties in as they move up towards the grades. So again, whether you attend the Cardinal, the Bartlett, the, the Merkland, the Batucketville, anywhere across the district, the learning experiences, the, the curriculum and the instruction is across the district. And your email has been updated. Thank you, Jeffrey. <laughs> and, uh, and, and remember before you sign off today, please make sure that you've given us your contact information so that uh, we will email you the registration link directly the morning of March 8th when the registration for preschool goes live. And thank you so much for attending. We really appreciate you taking time out of your day to learn more about this process. Thank you, Thank you everybody. everybody.